Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you so much for um, join, uh, for joining us this morning. Um, we'll continue admitting people as they come in, but I'd like to honor the ones who are here on time. My name is Patricia Okello, and I'm the co-founder of Kayana Create. And Kayana is a community of female entrepreneurs that comes together to support each other um, through building um, community of trust, um, deep col collaborations like the ones that we're doing today with Anzili and uh, capacity building through our various programs. We have the Super Circle program and we also have the um, Passport to Business program, which is a self-paced program that um, any entrepreneur can just plug in at the various four stages of the business and um, it helps just basically support and re-enhance some of the, um, of, you know, the principles of running a good business. Um, today morning, we are privileged to have um, David Googie from Anzili. I'll introduce him shortly. And just to mention that our, our sponsor for this session uh, is NCBA, and they're the ones that have made it possible, including the two videos that we have shared with you, which is part of our Women in Retail series that's available on Kayana Hub on YouTube. I encourage you to watch and listen to the stories of those um, entrepreneurs and what they're doing uh, basically to cope with the COVID and just generally giving us great insights into their businesses. I think we've shared Jennifer's story that her, her business is purely um, an online business and um, it's quite an interesting story to follow of T&Co and, and how she's had to pivot and uh, reposition herself. So Karibuni Sana and we also showed a video of how of, by Diana Howie I think which is also hosted on Anzili so it'll be interesting to hear as David gives us more um, insights into his own uh, learnings and what his uh, experience with um, the retail sector here in Kenya. So Karibuni, without much ado, I encourage you to all introduce yourselves um, uh, on, our, on the chat uh, because we're not in face-to-face -face and a big part of the work we do, as I have said, is about building community and networking. Kindly just, you know, share any comments, uh, questions that you hope to see addressed today on the chat and we'll continue to prompt Davy as he's speaking and having his presentation to make it as engaging as is possible with, um, with Zoom, of course, yeah. Um, as mentioned, and probably you've noticed that this, um, uh, this uh, whole session will be recorded and will be available on our social media uh, platforms um, so that uh, other people who may not come on the call may also have the experience of, of uh, listening to this great wisdom and this opportunity that we have here. So Karibuni Sana, my team is also online. There's Tina, um, Grace might be on mute, and Jeffrey, who are uh, going to continue chatting with you. And many of you have already interacted with them as they are the face of um, Kayana. I'm just stepping in as we have been unwell in the office this season. So Karibu. So um, Davy, it was very interesting reading your profile. Um, as the uh, co-founder of Pine Tree, uh, of Pay Tree, sorry, and um, the lots of experience that you have around branding. And as mentioned, and Zili is just one of your uh, brands. I really loved going on your website as well and seeing how the transition from Mizizi to Anzili happened and great education and great insights, especially for us who are in branding. It's great when you, you know, educate um, customers on the processes of, you know, changing your name and your brand and the thought processes behind it. I really loved reading that. Um, Davy has over 12 years experience uh, in tech and um, in payments. I think you said around five years experience in, in payments, which I'm really curious and, and interested in knowing more about. As I've mentioned in the chat, I also curate a box known as Pat Streets and have had interesting interactions with entrepreneurs of small and micro businesses. So I'm here and eager to learn and hopefully uh, we shall work together um, later in the year as we launch our e-commerce site. Karibu sana and welcome everybody to this session. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pat, for the nice introduction. Um, I would like to thank you and uh, the Kayana team for inviting uh, me and the team from uh, Anzili. And uh, it's been a pleasure. And uh, I also would like to welcome everyone that's uh, joining us for the Zoom session. I know being a Saturday, you'd rather be enjoying the sun that's has become quite a rare occurrence nowadays. So it's a pleasure to have you all on, uh, on our Zoom call today. So um, I hope this will be a session that will work for everybody. I hope it will be engaging. Um, so as I go through the different uh, slides, feel free to drop messages in the chat window, uh, your questions, uh, stop me at any point and uh, we can just have a chat. I think uh, let's make this as 
engaging as possible. Uh, ask your questions as we move along. I'll be uh, happy to stop and maybe clarify anything that we'd love to know about. So thank you. Um, I guess we start. Just give me a minute. All right, uh, super. So I guess uh, we are ready for today. So today I'm just going to take you through uh, the journey of actually building that perfect online shop. I mean, there really can be a perfect online shop, but maybe we can try. We'll see how much we can do. And uh, hopefully this will start you off on the journey. So like uh, Pat said earlier, I have been uh, in the e-commerce space for uh, the better of six years. Uh, we started uh, our platform back in 2015. Uh, so far, we have over 4,000 businesses that use our platform. Uh, recently, we rebranded our platform and uh, that was quite an interesting journey, but uh, it was quite, uh, it was brought out by the need for, for us to be able to better define who we are as a, as a company and as a brand. Uh, so previously we were known as NVV, but uh, we realized we had a lot of challenges, even with people just uh, telling the name. So we decided uh, to clarify who we were. And uh, so with Anzili, what we, we, what we say we do is we help businesses to build uh, better brands and we help them to grow their businesses. So um, as of today, I think uh, the, the lessons for today we are going to do 10 things that you need to know before you start an online shop. So this is a, quite the beginner class. So I think no one will feel left out as we progress doing this. Um, but if you do, kindly just drop your message on the chat window and I'll be quite happy to uh, respond. So to start us off, I think uh, the very first thing we are going to look at is uh, it's important to know that your product should be a solution to a problem. And uh, uh, for most people, when you're thinking of uh, what to do on e-commerce, uh, more often than not, you'll be asking your friends uh, and your family, uh, what do you think I could do? Or maybe there's something that you've thought about. And uh, the best place to start is to start by viewing your by looking at problems and finding ways of solving those problems. You know, uh, the, the world does not need us to give it more products. What the world needs is more solutions to problems. And uh, the question you need to be asking is what problem can I solve? Um, I think that's the very first thing you do when you're thinking of starting a business rather, not just moving into e-commerce, you know, find a thing that you're really passionate about. It could be knitting, it could be, uh, tea, like we've seen, or it could be, you know, um, skin care, like we've seen from uh, one of our uh, customers, that's Nature's Touch, and find something that you're passionate about and find a way to, you know, does it solve a problem? Uh, so I think for today, we are going to just explore, uh, you know, one of the things that could be a problem. So, uh, Let's look at a problem. And one of the problems uh, we are going to explore is that in the US, over 500,000 plastic straws are used on a daily basis. So with that, you can imagine the amount of litter that, is, uh, that happens around the world. So if you think about it, then we need to find a solution. And so what's our solution? So in this case, you will try and start thinking around ways of uh, reducing the amount of straws that are used. But then of course these straws need to be used because they have a purpose. So how can you create uh, straws that can be reusable? So here we are thinking of, uh, and here you can think in a very broad way. There are a lot of things that are used on a daily basis and they, you know, things like the razors and toothbrush and coffee cups and all manner of things. So this is just an example. 
And uh, the thing that you look, you start doing when you're thinking about your problem is, you know, what's the market size? So like we've seen 500,000 plastics sold in just one country in the world is such a huge number. Um, then the other thing you look at is what's the size of competition, you know, within that particular space. Um, and for us, uh, our solution would be a reusable straw. So, which now solves the problem of littering because that straw can be used many times. And that leads us to point number two, uh, where we have to note that not all products are viable for e-commerce. So as we are thinking about this solution, you know, we've thought about our reusable straw. So how can we think about it from the perspective of it being viable for e-commerce? So the first thing that we need to understand is uh, ask ourselves is, can it be shipped worldwide? You know, a lot of times uh, when it comes to e-commerce, you want to be able to package your things in a way that makes it uh, cost friendly for you. You also want to make it uh, such that you will not run into too many problems. And uh, one of the ways we have to think about is it should not be too heavy to ship. You know, you don't want to have a product that is too weighty because then that means you'll pay quite a lot when you're shipping the product or rather your customer will find it too expensive to pay for the shipping. And that will easily be a challenge. And this is one of the things that we've um, discovered even as we've uh, worked with the, with the many companies uh, when it comes to e-commerce, thinking about maybe even reducing your minimum packaging size so that whatever size of product you have becomes a product that doesn't cost you too much when you're shipping. Um, the other thing that you have to think about is uh, it should not be too fragile to ship. You don't want a product that breaks too easily because then you may end up having a lot of returns. You know, you will run into many problems with the couriers and the shipping companies because they don't give as much care to what they are carrying for you as you would. You know, they, for them, their job is to get the product from point A to point B. They don't care too much about how it gets there. I mean, they may try, but that's not their business. So it's important that you also consider that the item, you know, should not be too fragile, you know, it should not be an item that breaks very easy. Um, and with that in mind, then we have to start thinking about our straws. So we've discussed that we need to build a reusable straw. So we need a straw that first of all, will not be too weighty. And we need a straw that will not be too fragile. So uh, let's just explore some ways that we can build a reusable straw. So the first one would maybe say be made of bamboo. But then bamboo is hard to source. It may be expensive to produce. You know, being wood uh, also doesn't contribute very positively to the environment. And you're trying to also you know, reduce the impact on the environment. That's why you're reducing the number of straws that are being used on a daily basis. Uh, so maybe option number two, uh, glass. Uh, glass could be too fragile. You know, it could also break in someone's mouth. As, uh, they are sleeping on their milkshake, and that would lead you to many more problems. So in this case, you also you have to think about the two items, and then let's maybe move to the next one, which would be metal. So within metal, there are so many categories of metals you can use, and maybe you could think of using something like copper or aluminium that will not be too heavy and it won't be too fragile. So now that we've identified um, what we want to do, which is use the metal straws, then let's look at point number three. And uh, point number three in this case is communicate how you're different. Um, very rarely will you find that you're the first to do something in the market. There are many other companies that have thought in the same way and they, they're also creating their metal straws. Whatever your business is doing, most likely another hundreds of companies somewhere out in the world, thousands, possibly even millions are doing something similar. So what makes you stand as apart from everybody else from the competition is by communicating how you're different. So we have our metal straws and there they are, they look nice, they're built out of copper. So there are several things that 
you need to consider when you're thinking about differentiating yourself. And the first one is the design. So when it comes to design, one of the ways that you can explore is through things like color of the product, you know, personalization. Uh, you can try and have the trending colors of the day. You can have colors that are gender specific. Um, have your rose gold, maybe allow people to customize, have their name uh, embossed on the straw. You can have their logo embossed on the straw. Because what you're trying to do here is create that differentiating factor. Uh, the other thing that you would think about is function. You know? uh, so with function is, with a straw, yes, it's meant to drink stuff. It's meant to uh, pull liquids. So it doesn't change. But then maybe you can think about how you can re uh, envision how the straw looks and works. And in this case, maybe you can have a collapsible straw. And then maybe when thinking about a collapsible straw, how will this straw be carried in your customers' pockets and bags and so on? So if they just dump the straw inside their bag, uh, bags may not be the most of uh, sanitary places. And I don't think your customers want to get to where they need to use the straw and they have to ask the waiters, uh, can you wash this for me? So in this case, uh, first thing is maybe we can have the straw being collapsible. You know, that makes it very portable. It can, you know, like in the image uh, on the left, it can be easily carried on a keychain, which looks uh, fancy and nice. So in this case, you're trying to also think about uh, form as much as you're thinking about function. Uh, so uh, the other thing that we will think about is the uh, uh, differentiating factor is price. So price can actually be used to differentiate you from your competition. You know, there are two ways you could go about it. Uh, being a straw, uh, you need as many people to buy your straws. So you don't want to be priced on the very upper segment of the market. Uh, so you will have your basic straws, but then you could have your uh, limited editions, uh, your Yeezy straw uh, in this case. So you have your maybe uh, celeb pretty branded straws, you can have straws that have uh, these beautiful colorways or they have uh, special materials that make them much uh, better uh, for everybody. So in this case, you can have different pricing points. So maybe you have your uh, mass market straw that maybe could be priced at say 500 bob. But then you have these uh, limited edition straws that you could price at maybe 2,000 2, or more. So the other thing that uh, you think about would be uh, time. So with time, what you're trying to do here is think about uh, availability in the market. This is where you create uh, artificial scarcity, you know, where you may launch a product and only have it available for a very limited time. Uh, we have seen uh, a lot of major brands doing that where they launch. I mean, I remember there were some shoes that uh, were falsely called branded with Nike where they, they were said to contain blood inside, but they were only available, I think, for two days or so on the market. And they sold out within hours. They didn't even get to the two days. And that's one way of creating uh, scarcity and using the power of time to actually create uh, create uh, the artificial demand for a product, which helps you sell. Um, the Kardashian sisters, um, that is uh, for Chloe, I think, uh, she's, she's a master of it. They produce uh, special lines of cosmetics where those lines are only available on a specific day, on a specific time. And you find that those items are pretty much sold out within the first few minutes of being launched. So time is a great differentiating factor for your product. And that leads us to the next point. Um, not everybody will buy your product. You, know? uh, you think you have an amazing product, but not everybody will think the same. Now people will look at your product and they'll think, uh, oh no, this isn't something that I need. So it's very important that uh, you start with you know, ex 
exploring uh, the ideas of your products with those closest to you. This would be your families, you know, your friends, so your workmates. These are the people who most likely have a vested interest in your success. They'll give you good feedback. Uh, they'll also be able to uh, help you in the evolution of your product. And maybe at this point, uh, just want to remind you, feel free to stop me at any point. Um, maybe we can just have a chat, uh, ask any questions as I'm moving along. If you need uh, clarification on any of the things that uh, we are talking about today. I mean, this is a conversation. It's supposed to help us. And uh, your ideas would also be quite a welcome addition to the session. Um, and uh, the next thing um, we can think about is uh, creating buyer personas. So uh, buyer personas are basically envisioning who would be your ideal customer. You're trying to think about who do I want to sell? How do they look like? What defines them? Um, and in this case, you're trying to uh define someone who would be interested in buying your product what kind of problem would they have that i'm able to solve for them and uh, finally you need to research your customer your competitors sorry so go out there find people who are doing similar things as you are and uh, try to find what they're doing that makes them actually sell they might be doing it slightly differently from you, but there's a lot to be learned and to be gained from uh, your competition. And uh, with that, I think uh, we are going to look at something called the audience-centric approach. You know, this is where we are looking at uh, the demographics. So demographic sounds like a big word, but all it is is looking at the gender of your potential customers, you're thinking about their age, what would most likely be their age, uh, where would they be located? Because maybe you're not selling to everybody in the world. Your target customer is located in only one country. It could be even as small as one county, but the market size is large enough for your business. So you're also trying to look at things like their income. Uh, depending on how you price your product, then it will be affordable to only people within specific income brackets. Um, the other thing would be something like the education level. Uh, would it be a product that needs someone to have a, a kind of skill that would have been acquired through them having gone through a, a certain level of education? And uh, the other thing you're also going to think about is their psychographics, their interests. Uh, here we are thinking about their personalities. We are thinking about the things that they love to do. Being a uh, nice warm Saturday like today, what will you find these people doing? Uh, would they be going out to run uh, at Arura or would they be more interested in just uh, kicking it back at home? That will impact the kind of customer who actually buys your product, you know, because most likely there is a habit that your ideal customer will have. So it's very important to think about uh, your personalities and interests of the people who buy from you. The other approach is something called the product-centric approach. So here we are looking at it the other way around. We are starting with the price, I mean the product. So we are thinking uh, these trolls that we've made, who would they appeal to? Who would be the ideal Customer. And uh, for those of you that are joining, uh, this is not um, a session about straws. It's a session about um, the, the things that you need to build the perfect uh, e-commerce business. You know, so straws is the example that we're using. And we, what we are trying to explore is we've thought of a product, which is straws, and we're just trying to think about how they fit in to the different aspects of being able to build you know, the perfect e-commerce business. So on the product-centric approach, we're also thinking about the design. Uh, what, who would the design of your stores appeal to? Would it be kids? Would it be the parents? Would it be uh, people who are doing a certain activity? You're also thinking about the price. 
Um, and we think that we are, when we think about our stores, maybe they will appeal to the younger generation, guys between uh, 18 to 35, guys who would be environmentally conscious, people who would care about uh, the environment they live in because it could be the environment that works for them or where they live in for the next couple of years. Maybe this guy might be the kind of guy you want to buy your straws. He might be the ideal customer. So you have to think about where do I find this guy? Where does he live? In? Uh, what is his income level? You know, so those are the things that you're thinking about at this stage. So the next thing is um, you can actually build an audience before you have a product. You can actually flip the whole concept of uh, launching your e-commerce business or a product for your e-commerce uh, shop on its head by saying, maybe I can start by building the audience first and then I'll launch the product because maybe you also learn from the audience what they actually want to do. Uh, a lot of times we, we think that, you know, if, if, I, if I make a product, they will buy it. That, that just doesn't happen. You know, uh, people don't care about what you made or built. It's not important to them. That what they care about is what problem does it solve for me? And so based on the concept of you building an audience, I think some of the things you think about um, is first of all, how can I build a community? How can I build people who are potentially going to actually buy my product in the future? So in this case, uh, with our eco-friendly straws, maybe you could start an Instagram profile where you will talk about um, being conscious about the environment, you're sharing products that show um, how reusable products are working for the environment. And so in this case, you're trying to get the community more engaged in what you're doing. And in the process, what you're trying to do is establishing your authority. You're trying to be a thought leader. You want people to engage with you on your community. Uh, you want guys to uh, come in and ask you about what you think on different things, uh, maybe about the environment. You want them to talk about the different products that they've seen that um, eco-friendly and how they're, you know, interested in such things. And in the process, now you can make your move. You know, you've got them engaged. They're all interested. This is the time that now you can tell them, guys, we are launching something that you will love. And what you're trying to do is building the three C's of community. You know, the first C, and I think this is quite important for every business, especially if you're on e-commerce. And the first thing is building content. You need to have great content. People are not going to follow your social media profiles if what you post is not important to them. If it doesn't add any value to their lives, then I don't need to follow you. There is nothing that you're doing for me. The next thing is collaboration. That means partner with equally-minded guys, equally-minded brands, uh, get the word out there about what you're doing. And finally, the third thing is be consistent. Uh, both regularly. Uh, I mean, the biggest fight that as entrepreneurs we go through every day is the fight with the algorithm. So I think that's, that's a consistent problem across uh, all platforms, you know, where you find that you're trying to post, but... Uh, the Instagram algorithm never gets your word out there. One of the ways to beat the algorithm is to be consistent. The more consistent you are, then the more likely it is for your post to be seen. And this does not mean, you know, going out and spamming and just getting things every minute. No, it just means if you're going to be posting twice a day, make sure it's every day. It doesn't matter whether it's rain or sun. It doesn't matter if it's going to be an election day or it's going to be your birthday, just make sure you have posted. It's very important because the algorithm doesn't care about what you're doing. Um, so the next thing that is important. So at this point, I think I'll just take a short break. Um, I don't know if there are any questions uh, 
you can raise your hand and uh, you can just have a chat uh, if there are any questions. All right, so it's looking like uh, the Saturday is going well. Everyone seems to be understanding what we are saying. So the next thing that we will look at is uh, don't reinvent the wheel. You know, don't try to do stuff afresh. A lot of the things that you do, uh, they are things that have been done before. So don't try to reinvent the wheel. It's, it's not the time to go building your square wheels and your new interesting concepts because the biggest challenge you will have doing that is, first of all, your product is not validated. People do not understand uh, what it is. So you will have a very hard time trying to educate people before they can even buy. So that means it will take you longer to make a sale. So what you're trying to do here is go back on what actually works. You know, Try to think about ways of improving your product. And how do we go about it? Being disruptive. So being disruptive means when we thought about the straws, we didn't think about an extra new concept. You no, know, we just kept it simple. We knew that the straw is you know, that great thing, maybe bendy at the top, hole in the middle. And we didn't try to make it fancy, maybe with handles and all those things, because then it creates new problems, which most likely don't exist. People already know how to use a straw. And you're not trying to show people a new way of doing things. So by being disruptive, what you're trying to do is to appeal to what they already know, but then you're just saying, I'm making it better. So rather than you using those disposable straws and they are going to damage the environment, why don't we create these new straws that actually saves the environment, but still does what it should do. So there's a process when it comes to thinking about how to be disrupting. And the first thing you will ask yourself is, can we do it? Um, and here you're trying to think about your expertise. You're trying to think, is this an area that we are well skilled in? Is this an area that I have the right knowledge to about improving? And then you're also trying to think about the scalability. So I've made this amazing product. Maybe it's this amazing hair food that's supposed to give a sheen to people's hair. But then you have to think about does it only work on certain sample hairs, but won't work on some others? So you have to think beyond your kitchen counter where most of us actually call our lab. And you have to think about how does it work beyond just me testing it on my own hair? Is it something that can be used across different hair types, you know, straight hair, curly hair, uh, and maybe the super rolled type that looks like beads. So you have to think about that. Um, the other thing that you think about is the cost of disruption. And this is not the cost to the customer, it's the cost to you. Because as you're doing this, you have to think about how much will it cost me to do this thing that I'm thinking about in a new way. Do I have the amount, do I have the money to spend trying to rebuild? Or, re, or disrupt how things are done. So it's very important to actually think about the cost. And based on that answer, that will impact the next question, which is, is there a market for it? You can spend so much money uh, creating this new way of drinking, of uh, using drinking straws, or, or creating this new amazing soap, but there might be no market. Maybe no one cares for a new soap. So you have to think about the need that is going to be solved by your new soap. Again, like we said on the very first session, solve a problem. Don't create a product, solve a problem. So here you're trying to think about a problem and you're finding, you're looking at the market size of that problem. You know, how many people would want to use this product that I'm thinking of making? because then that gives you the best 
returns on investment. That is what grows your business. That's what gives you the profits that you require. So after you've put in all your development costs and all the costs of your packaging and all the nice artwork that you've got done, there needs to be people that can actually pay for your product. So it's very important to also think about that. Um, and then the other thing that we will think about is we take it to the market. Uh, just having a product that is disruptive, that is uh, amazing, is not going to cut it. You have to also find and think of ways of getting it to the market. How are you going to get it out there? How are you get, going to get it known? How do you get people to actually know you exist? So this is the point where now you're thinking about your marketing strategy. You're thinking about all the tactics that you're going to use to get your product out to the masses and to get them buying. Uh, because just because you are disruptive doesn't mean that customers are going to know about it. And that brings us to the next point, which is finding your customers. So customers are many. You've done your research. You've got your straws uh, all picked out. And you know how it's, you know, you have a hot pot product and you're ready to just push it out there. So where do you find your target customers? There are, of course, a lot of obvious presence. And the first one is Facebook pages. So go in there, look at pages of your competitors, look at groups that guys have where they talk about maybe it's, maybe you have a new diaper that you want to introduce to the market. And what you're trying to think about is where can I find people I are interested in diapers? So maybe on Facebook, you find there's a mother's group where they talk about diapers. So that would be a very good source of finding your customers because if you told them about the new diaper, then those people will most likely be very interested. You don't want to go onto the mechanics group. The guys will really not care about that. That's why they left the house in the first place. And uh, the next place is to spy your competition. You know, check out the profiles of your potential competition look at what they're doing, look at the people that are actually making inquiries on their pages. What are they talking about? What are they asking? And maybe right in there, you now begin to see who exactly you should be marketing to, who you should be talking to to buy your product. The next one, hashtags. Just follow the hashtags, go out there, look at hashtags that are related to what you're selling, find the information that people are sharing, and join the process, join the bandwagon, share information on those hashtags. It will lead you to find new customers who most likely would have never discovered about your product in the very first place. And blogs, you know, guys will talk about stuff within your space. So if it's our pros, what are you trying to do is to find people who are talking about the environment, find people who are going to discuss topics within your area. You could ask to be a guest blogger on their blogs, you know, just write about how you, what you're doing, the little steps you're making. Check out news sites, check out uh, research companies, you know, just find who would most likely be interested in your company. Basically, in total, just find where your customers hang out and join those places, you know, just hang out with your customers because in the process, that's where you are actually going to find uh your potential customers so the next thing uh so now we found where we are going to find our customer and now we want them to buy so step eight create a wait list so maybe what you're going to ask yourself is what exactly is a wait list so it's pretty much a way for people to say i'm interested in what you have to sell i would love to get it most likely, I would love to be the first person. So one of the most effective ways of building a wait list is actually by using emails. You know, Build a landing page on your website before your product is ready. Let guys sign up. Send them to your website, to your landing page from your e-commerce site. Let them know something new is coming. Sign up to be among the first to get it. You know, And 
the reasons why waitlist work is first of all they activate people's competitive impulse i mean we've seen the lines that people make when they want to buy iphones i mean it's crazy uh one of the companies that really nailed it was a u.s company by the name of robin hood they were recently used for the wrong reasons but at the point when robin hood decided they're going to launch they actually created a wait list they put their value proposition you know our product is the best product for making online trading it's zero commissions we are not going to charge fees and everybody was interested before they launched robin hood had built up a wait list of over a million people waiting to use their platform which is quite outstanding so that leads to the next thing which is effective social proof people want to have the latest gadget the latest product in the market they want to be the first it gives you a chance to show up it's the reason people are always asking to be included in pre-launches and if there's a new movie coming out you want to be among the people who went for the pre-screening because everybody wants the social proof that look i'm connected to the right people and i can get the stuff before you can get it and the that thing is it creates a sense of value people want to see this new thing that is behind this place where they can't access it so by creating that wait list what you're doing is you're implanting in people in your customers minds that whatever it is that you're selling is a thing of value i mean i have to wait for it so a simple way is create an email collection form on your website get guys to, to begin dropping their emails and maybe their phone numbers and on the day that you go live with your product they'll be the first to know it gives them that pride that look i was the first to get my hands on this stuff and the next important thing which uh, i think is quite something that most of you have learned about is getting your products into the hands of influencers uh, there's a lot that has been said about influencers and there's a lot of debate around whether they are effective or not but i think it's very important to get your hands into people that have a huge amount of visibility when you start your social channel most likely you have just a couple of hundreds maybe a thousand or two when you're starting and that's not a lot of places so you have the influencers who've been building this loyal following of guys who believe what they say of guys who actually want to know what's this new thing that's out there what are you using and that's why you're finding influencers always talking about i'm using this new lotion for my skin and it works amazing there's this new lipstick these eyelashes are amazing uh, i'm taking this tea it's great for detoxing and by using influencers what you're doing is you're getting to reach a big audience than you would have done with your own company you're also building trust someone is talking about your brand you know other people are talking about you it's not just you who is out there saying that look at me this is what i have to give and the other thing is it helps you also grow your social following yeah. the more they talk about you guys want to come and check you out they'll follow you and they'll want to be the first to know again it's kind of a wait list the other thing is it gets you more leads there will be people who will make a lot of inquiries when the influencer talks about your product they will drive sales to you that is actually a really big one if you get the right kind of influencer because that's a really important part you have to also work with the right kind of influencers you don't want to get someone who talks about uh, vehicles but you're asking them to to converse about food it may not work very well because the audience is tuned to them for very specific reason they want to know about vehicles so it's quite important that you also get the right kind of influencer you know again if you have any questions i'll be happy to have a chat with you you can raise your hand you can drop your questions on the chat window and we can just talk as we go we're almost at the end this is just the second last slide 
So we have categories of influencers, and we're just going to look at two of them. You have your nano influencers. These are guys with maybe up to 10K followers. And typically these will be, you know, very engaged people. They'll have their very close friends in there. They'll have their inner circles, their family. So these are just popular guys. Those are the ones that fit within the nano influencers space. And then on the other hand, you have the slightly larger influencers who are the micro influencers. So these ones have above 10,000 followers, somewhere in the range of 50,000. And these ones are now a slightly bigger circle of influence. A bit more people are listening to them. And at this stage, we can just look at an example. So we have our straws and we've decided to get one micro influencer. We asked them, what is their fee? They said it's maybe like 5,000 bob per post. So as a business, you start to think about it. Um, what would 5,000 do for me? And there's so many ways that you can justify it, but you say, you know what, let's, let's throw in the ball. Let's just see what happens. So you spend your 5,000. The micro influencer has maybe about 50,000 followers. And typically order value per product is maybe a thousand bob. And by the end of the day, you already have something in the range of 50,000 worth of sales. I mean, that's about 10 times the amount of money you spent on that one post. So I think that gives you really good value. But of course, for you to be able to get that value, it's also very important to get the right kind of influencer so that it's a very nice balance between what they're charging versus what you're selling versus who their audience is. So you need to find and cut that balance so that it's not just you throwing your money in the dark and hoping it grows. And finally, you're much better off building a brand rather than drop shipping. I think one of the areas that we fall into or one of the biggest mistakes that we fall into when we are when we are building our businesses is thinking I could just import this stuff from China and once I've imported it I'll sell it off and then once it's all done three months down the line your website is dead your business is not running that is really not sustainable first of all is it fails to build relationships with your customers because then you're not known for anything. It's just there was a guy who was on Instagram and he was selling pots and pans, but he went. And then maybe the next time you're up, you're telling guys, now I have these amazing hats that I'm selling. So that doesn't build any relationship because the people who bought the pots and pans are not in interested in your hats. I mean, as we saw earlier, you have to figure out who your customer is. And you don't want to spend that time and that effort just trying to just trying to build out a whole customer targeting and then waste it after the first few times. Um, I can see we have a question. Um, Lydia is asking how and where can we find the influencers? I think some of the great places to start is uh, the social media channels, which is pretty much where they'll be talking to the audiences. And um, here you're trying to think about Instagram, uh, Facebook, TikTok, which is quite big nowadays. And you're trying to look at people who are talking about things that are, that are very close to what you're selling. You're trying to think about people who are resonating, who, who is their target audience. If they appeal to families and they appeal to people who have kids, then and your products are also related to families and to kids then most likely there would be a right kind of influencer for you you're also looking at um how engaged they are with the audience you know you're also trying to look at how many views does a post get how many likes does it get how many comments i mean the more comments they get on their posts then the better engaged they are with the audience it means that there's something that they are doing that is right for them and something that is right that their audience loves. So that is one of the ways that you can actually find and also 
begin narrowing down on the influences. Uh, thank you, Lydia, for that question. Uh, the next thing is, remember, when you're building a brand, you're building an asset. As your business grows, you may be very interested in seeing how you can increase the business, grow the business. And one of the ways you would do that is by maybe taking a loan from a bank or getting funding. You will not get funding if the funder does not see the consistency in what you're doing. If people find that day you're on one thing, tomorrow you've left and you're doing another thing, then people don't want to deal with you because then they are not sure that you are also someone they can find. But when you're building a brand, it's an asset. This is something that you can go out and say, this is how much it's worth. And this is how much I'm willing to risk for you to give me so much money so that I can build this business. Um, the other thing, and which is actually the most important is brands last products die. I mean, over the years, we've seen a lot of companies that have been in existence and they build these amazing products, but the products have gone out of market after a certain period of time. And that's because you find consumer demands and consumer trends keep changing over time. So you might have a product that works at a certain point in time because it solves a certain problem, but five years down the line, it's no longer working. And so you need to drop it and build a new one. But if you built your brand, then people are always willing to come and listen to you. I mean, one of the best brand stories that everybody is familiar with is the Coca-Cola story. 120 years now, and throughout the years, it's still been Coca-Cola. I mean, they've brought so many products into the market. Some come for a near, then they're out. Different ways of packaging, then they're out, but the brand has still remained the same. So brands last, but products die. So it's very important that what you're doing is building a brand and not just a product. And finally, which is the benefit to everyone is you can sell the brand. Um, at this point, we can, this is the time you're cashing out. You've done all the hard work, the business has grown, the sales is good, and people are interested in your business. I mean, locally, we have the example of uh, Nice and Lovely, who are acquired for by L'Oreal some years back for a couple of uh, million dollars. And I mean, that's amazing. You've built your business to a point where now it's interesting to your competitors or to other parties who think I would pay big money for this. I think for me, one of the most inspiring stories is uh, this business uh, known as Dollar Shave Club in the US. And they built such a big and amazing business that within about five years of existence, they were bought out by Gillette for a billion dollars. That's just five years of really hard work. But then that's the power of a brand. And uh, with that, I think we've come to the end of the training. Um, after this, we're just going to do a quick demo of uh, the Anzili platform. I'm just going to show you uh, what our platform looks like, uh, how easy it is to set up, and then we can see how we move from there. So for now, I think I would like to just take questions. Uh, thanks, Pat. Uh, maybe we can just get questions from the audience. Thank you so much, um, Davey. I have taken some copious notes and um, yeah, a lot of learnings. I really loved the last part where I think it's very relevant for us who are in business that, to understand that we're building an asset because sometimes we're so you know, focused on the work that needs to go to business building. We forget that we can actually be building a product that can later uh, be sold. Um, I, I have a personal experience of, of our family business that was actually um sold as the brand which is amazing so um, yeah thank you very much for um that uh, great presentation i'd love to see um some uh, thoughts and chat and comments on uh, the chat which we will also address as we go along one of my teammates tina has just told me to talk about my own experience in using influencers as mentioned earlier um we have a product where we curate and consolidate made in kenya 
um, products in our gift box, a corporate gift gift box. It's known as Pat Streets. And um, the, it, we launched it last year during COVID and it has been really, really well received. And I have to say, um, in, at the beginning, we used um, influencers, and Lydia, maybe this is also, you know, just for you to get an idea of how you can access the influencers, and um, just by following them on, as he's, as um, David said, the social media pages, you kind of get a gist of um, what their audience is like and if your product is relevant for them. And it's quite amazing when we talk about nano and micro and macro influencers and the impact that they have. And sometimes even using just, you know, smaller influencers that may not have like, you know, the 1 million followers, but have, you know, the 100,000, etc. You find that that niche market that they follow are so loyal and uh, literally will purchase and promote um, the products that they talk about. Another way in which you can get your products to um, influencers is getting them to just love the product on their own by sending them PR boxes. I've noticed when I speak about PR boxes with the small and micro businesses, they look at it as a cost. And hey, I have to tell you, uh, marketing has a cost. It's not a, it's not free. <laughs> so when you're doing your um, budgets, when you're doing your uh, planning for your products, I think it's very important to put something aside for marketing as well. And this marketing could be a PR box that then goes out to an influencer very well uh, put together such that they are so happy and so excited about it that they want to speak about it on their channels and um, uh, and it's more authentic i think to their audiences because sometimes um uh, paid promotions you know is something that they do and that's how they earn their money which is great but sometimes for these smaller influencers i feel that um, when you send them something that they love the response from their audience is actually quite amazing and has really helped uh, move and even for us at kayana to identify uh, businesses that have such high potential in terms of growth because the audiences absolutely love them so that's a little bit of insight on my end from my experience of using micro influencers. I also really love this, what you talked about, spy on the competition. Another nice word for spy on the competition is research. <laughs> I think we all need to do a lot more um, research um, when we're bringing products to market. We had have had interesting conversations with Davy, and you know where uh, somebody gives you their product and wants it on, uh, you know, just on the website, and by some miracle um, you expect it to move. And I think um, uh, we should not be lazy as entrepreneurs. I think we really, really need to understand our audiences, understand what they like, keep a track of even just basic data on Excel on the products that are moving and the products that are not moving. Um, we talked about not being in love, so in love with our products that we don't want to look at the actual data in terms of who's buying and who your audiences are. I think that's um, uh, really, really great. I loved the idea of a wait list. I'd love to know more about that. I've, I hadn't really thought about that as a way of engaging audiences, and I'll certainly do more research on it. Um, really, really loved that. Um, Yes, and of course, I'm passionate about building brands. In Kayana, we have numerous brands, and I can assure you they are assets because they do generate an income for us, including uh, this one that we, we're doing right now with the women in retail, um, uh, retail product, which is actually a brand on its own under our umbrella, and uh, many, many um, potential sponsors are really interested in, in brands that are uh, you're build, when you're building brands and things that are relevant to them as, um, as the as the sponsors. So that was a little bit on my notes. Um, I don't know what you think, David, do we look at some of the comments on, or do you want to do your walkthrough and Zili, and then we can take the comments in the chats? I think, um, I think we can just take uh, two, well, I can see we have two questions. I think we can just uh, answer those ones. And uh, yeah, I can see you are listening. Great notes you took there. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, we have a question from Julie who's asking about uh, the digital tax. So, well, as, as of now, um, the digital tax uh, was put on the back burner. Um, I think the full name for it is a uh, digital services tax. Um, and I think that will explain something about it, which is it's a tax that is paid when you're offering services online. So if you're selling products, uh, it doesn't apply to you. Uh, it specifically applies for businesses that actually do sell products. I mean, sell services online. So if you do bookings um, or if you sell maybe appointments, scheduling, uh, or businesses like ours, rather, like uh, Anzili, we are affected by the digital services tax. And uh, it's, it's applied onto 
uh, the pricing of whatever it is that you're selling. Um, I hope that's that's just a quick summary of it. I think we would have to explore maybe this in a later session where we discuss more about uh, how taxes uh, uh, apply to your business and how you can uh, work within the space of taxes in a way that is uh, understandable and not so profitable for you. And I know this is why quite a challenging topic for most entrepreneurs. So I think maybe this is something Pat uh, would consider being a topic for discussion. Um, Collins uh, has a question. Uh, you're starting an online business. How do you deliver products to your customers effectively and efficiently? Um, are there logistics companies uh, that do this? Um, I think in response to this, uh, maybe I'll, I'll talk about Anzili. I think this, this serves as a segue into what we do. And uh, I guess we can just go straight into the demo of what we do. And from there, maybe we can also get some more questions as we move along. So Anzili is a platform that enables you to uh, start and scale and grow your business online, and uh, we are able to we are able to do that uh, by providing you with uh, uh, three important services that you require for an online business. The first one is a platform where you're able to sell, so that is an e-commerce website. Uh, the second one is a way for the customers to be able to pay you. So once you've uh, got your e-commerce site up and running, you need to be able to get your money. And the third one is delivery, as Collins has just asked. And uh, I'm just going to show you a quick uh, demo on how Anzili works, and then maybe we'll just take questions. So once you get onto the platform, uh, you just type anzili.com and you, you will land on this page that I'm on. Um, it's quite easy. We have uh, three pricing packages uh, that suit different uh, businesses um, or rather growth of your businesses. And uh, we have our start plan, which is uh, beginner friendly. Uh, so some of the benefits you get are a drag and drop e-commerce builder, which is simply a very easy way, as I'm going to show you during the demo, of how you're able to just put together. You don't need get a developer to do this for you. This is something that you can just do all on your own. Uh, you also get to uh, have your e-commerce stop running on your on a, on a domain, the, on the Anzili domain. Uh, if you get on the grow plan, that allows you to use your own domains. It's just 1750 bob per month. Uh, we also offer you international shipping. So that means not only will we be able to help you with deliveries locally in Kenya, uh, we also do deliveries for you anywhere in the world. Um, and finally, you have a scale plan, which allows you to be able to not only just incorporate uh, your retail side of selling, but in case you also want to sell to wholesalers, you have people who buy products from you to go and resell. This is an easy way to keep track of that. You're able to keep track of all the uh, buyers and sellers who are buying things on wholesale. There are also many other tools like abandoned cart recovery. This is where people, you know, put things on their carts and then maybe for some reason they fail to continue to pay for them. So we have tools that can help you find out who did that and you can send them an email, maybe throw in a discount for them to buy. Um, and so I'll just take you through the process of signing up. It's quite simple. Hit the start trial button. Um, and uh, we actually give you a 14 day trial. Uh, and uh, for purposes of this session, we are going to be offering a 15% discount. I think we are going to uh, avail the coupon code to Payana uh, and they can share that. So if you sign up, you get 15% off any of our plans for the next three months. So select your plan. Um, the process is quite straightforward. Uh, it's all self sign up. You don't need um, any assistance from our team. Uh, so once you do that, you will get two templates uh, that you can use to set up your business. So these are just to start you off. Uh, you can just click on them if you would like to have a quick preview of what they, they look like and see what 
you know you love and uh, maybe you can decide which one works for you best as you're starting so that's that's just an example of one of the templates it's, it comes ready to go um then you can also check out uh, the other templates and uh yes. So once you're done, you've seen the template that you'd love to use, you get to select it. And on this section, just put in uh, the name of your business. Uh, so we'll just uh, call our business Boba Beauty. Uh, top name, here is where you're defining the URL or how to be able to get to the URL of your business. So just put one word here, so it could be Bob beauty and what uh, the next step um, so put in your first name uh, put in your phone number And then you just select a username that you would love to be using to log in. Here you can just um, set your email where you receive your notifications, uh, come up with a password. Agree with the terms of service. If you did have a coupon code like the one that we are going to share after this session, this is where you actually just select I have a coupon code and put it in and click on create account. So you will land on this screen. Um, so what you're being asked uh, is um, the shop key. So the shop key is, um, is a special key that uh, you actually use uh, for you to be able to receive payments on your payments backend. And uh, in case you do not have a shop key, um, like the one that I'm going to use in this case, um, you just click on create one and it's going to show you a process of quickly just creating a shop key. And with that, then your shop should be ready for you to be able to receive payment. So in this case, I'll just put the name of my shop. I'll put in the shop key, click update shop key. And with that, your Anzili uh, shop is already set up. So it shows you what plan you've selected. It shows you how many days you have remaining on your trial. Uh, the next thing you can do is click on the dashboard. So the dashboard is uh, where now you start the process of being able to learn more about your shop. So in this case, if you click on view shop, it will take you to the URL for your shop. Um, so you can see the on bobabeauty.anzili.co.k. So it's already created for you. You can see the shop is ready to go. So all you need to do is just with a little customizations, like I'm going to show you, you will have your shop ready to go. So with that, uh, if you scroll down, we can see the process of changing the logo, which is quite easy. So you can click on that. And uh, once you're here, you will get a menu with many options on how you can customize your shop. Uh, you can change everything from the 
typography. The typography is basically the fonts that have been used on your on this shop that you've created. You can change how your footer looks. You can change the colors of, but for purposes of this, since we don't have too much time, we are going to change our logo. So with that, we'll just come and we can see this logo is already here. So the first process is just to remove that existing logo. Then we'll select a logo that uh, we can use. So we'll just click on select files. So once you click on select files, just again, get into your machine and look for, you know, where did you save that logo file? Once you find it, click on open. So immediately upload your logo. Put in a null text. This is really important, especially because of uh, search engines. So we just put in that this is uh, the Boba beauty logo and once you're done just click select the last if you want to crop it uh, you can just click on skip cropping at the very bottom of the screen you're good so as you can see the logo has been uploaded um if you needed to change the sizes of uh, the logo you can you can easily do that as you can see the logo has been uploaded and uh, if you need to change the name of your site, this is where you do it. You can put in the tagline. Once you're done, just hit publish. And that saves that logo right onto your site. So it's that simple. Once you're done, just click on the little X at the very top of your screen, and it will take you right back to your dashboard. Um, so just click on the dashboard, and you're good to go. And if you need tips on how to do the different uh, edits, all you have to do is click on, you know, learn more about customizing. We have great tutorials that take you step by step into the entire process of what you require to do. So it all just, you know, it shows you with images. So we'll be able to just guide you. And in case you're stuck, just drop us an email. We'll be happy to jump on a Zoom call with you and we'll be able to show you. If you need to add a product uh, to your shop, uh, that's again, quite an easy process. So we'll just come here, click on add product. Um, so we'll just call, we'll just add maybe one product for Boba Beauty. So we can just call it a uh, backpack. So you get to enter some more information. So here is where you're entering all the details about your backpack. You know, it's a uh, it friendly, um, you can say it's a uh, original. Uh, so basically what you're doing is in here, you're just putting a description of what your backpack looks like. So the next thing is uh, we're just going to put a price on it. We can say it's 1200 Bob. Um, then the next item is we need now to add the product image to our backpack. So we are going to click on upload files. Once we do that, we are going to click on select files. Uh, select the uh, backpack, have it uploaded right onto your site. Slim um, backpack. Always remember to put in the alt text and then at the very bottom, red button, set product image. And once you do that, then your image will have been uploaded, as you can see. Go to the very top and click on publish. And that's done. So if we go back to our site on Boba Beauty, and we view our shop, you 
we scroll down, we should be able, if we go to the shop page, we should be able to see the new backpack that we just uploaded and it's right there and it's ready for purchase. If a customer were to click on add to cart, you know, they can go right ahead and complete the entire process of purchasing it. So maybe the next question would be, what if I want to change the slider on the home page? Again, that's pretty easy. So all you do is click on customize shop. And it gives you a quick tour on how to be able to uh, go, go through the entire process for this purpose. We're not going to use it, but it's important that you just allow it to take you through the process. Uh, so you have all these little things that are highlighted in blue. And within them, you can find that you have different actions that you can take on any of the sections on your e-commerce shop. If you need to change this image, it's very straightforward. So all you would required to do would be able to just click on smart banner settings. Once you click on that, it gives you a pop-up. And as you can see, it's quite easy to hit replace. And if um, I think we can just look for an image. Um, let's just take that image and select that image. And you'll see it will change before our eyes. And you click on save. And that's done. So it saves it on that section. What if I need that these two things to be in different places? I can actually move them. So it's that simple. Once you're done, just click on done and hit publish. And that's it. So as you can see, it's already updated that on your website. So that's just a quick demo of uh, the entire process of uh, how to be able to use the Anzili platform. As you can see, it's quite easy and straightforward. Uh, you can customize your own shop. You don't need to hire a developer to be able to do anything for you. You can change any section um, on your own site. Um, so in terms of how the payments are received, so once a customer makes a payment, you will get a notification, uh, both on text and on email, that lets you know that there has been a purchase on your website. Uh, thereafter, uh, you should be able to get a call from our delivery team, and they'll be able to pick the order from you and deliver it anywhere, not only in the country, anywhere in the world. Uh, typically, within the country, orders are done in 24 hours um, across the world. Within about five days, your order should be delivered. And uh, back to you, uh, Pat. Uh, thank you for the session. So I think we can take questions. Um, thank you I can so see much. Have, yeah. Thank you so much, Davy, for that yeah, walkthrough. Yeah, You've seen there's a question from. Um, Yes, about the payment and considering a payment plan, etc. I, I don't know if that has been answered on George's behalf. And of course, then you can also take Marion's um, question. And any more questions before we wind up today's session, please post them in the group or just put your hand up and you'll be um, acknowledged. Right. So I think uh, in the meantime, I can just uh, ask, respond to Marion's question. Uh, as a small business, what would be the second option? Uh, would the second option be better instead of the scale package or can someone upgrade? I mean, you can always upgrade to any plan uh, at any point. I mean, you're not tied down to the plan that you subscribe to. So as your business grows, you might find that uh, you started on the start package and now your business is doing much better and now you want to move into the grow package. So you're free to move between packages. If at any point you also want to downgrade, I mean, we are happy to let you downgrade. Over to you, Pat. I think uh, that's the last of the questions. Yeah, thank you so, so much. Um, last chance for any questions, comments to come in. 
before we wind up today's session, it's 11.30, we, were, we had um, scheduled at least two hours for today's session in case there were additional questions. Um, uh, our host NCB is not in, but um, yet last week they had shared great um, insights around um, opportunities for funding uh, for small and micro businesses and it's uploaded on our YouTube channel uh, on Kayana Hub. So please go there and see um, NCBA's presentations from last Saturday on um, funding and opportunities to fund small businesses. Um, uh, and if they have any products, of, of course, for e-commerce, you may also be able to recognize some of the products that they have there for people who are going into e-commerce. So thank you, Nelly. Um, Nelly is one of our members. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, anybody who joined midway, we, uh, probably midweek next week, you'll find the links sent into your email boxes and you can watch the entire presentation from Anzili. Um, quick last remarks from my end. Um, we, oh, Julie has her hand raised. Maybe Julie, you can unmute and ask your question. Hi, hi, hi Pat, thanks so much for this forum. I wanted to ask, um, what, what is the core business of Pat Street and Kayana? I see there are two different organizations. Thank you. So uh, thank you so much for, for that, Julie. Just a recap on what Kayana is. Kayana is a community of female entrepreneurs. So if you're a female entrepreneur, you're most welcome to join our community. Our community does three things. It um, bring, uh, creates a community of trust where we share um, uh, through learning, through storytelling, uh, our experiences as business owners and primarily to grow our businesses. Um, and um, we build capacity to ma through masterclasses such as the ones that we are offering today and uh, uh, many others that are available. And we form deep collaborations with uh, various institutions uh, that are looking to promote uh, female entrepreneurs, and uh, that's a, a, quite a really big part of what we do. We've worked closely with the Kenyan government, the SME Advisors Office, um, the UK Tech Hub, etc. And basically just to grow the community and grow the capacity on our offering. Now under Kayana, we have various brands. I think at the beginning of this presentation, Davy spoke about how Anzili is just one of the brands under Patri. And for us in Kayana, it's the same thing. We've talked about how important it is to build an asset and you build an asset through brand building. And some of our assets are Kayana News and Pat Streets, the one that you have um, spoken about. What does Pat Streets do? It highlights and gives a platform to small and micro businesses where um, we then uh, share your products in the corporate sector so that corporates can also have an opportunity to see the product offering for small and micro businesses. And um, it's a big part of um, access to business, which we believe, uh, access, sorry, to um, markets, which I believe is a big part that draws access then to um, finances. I think the two go hand in hand. So we grow the market and of course, give you opportunities through uh, various partners to have um, uh, you know, financial support for your businesses. I hope, Julie, that answers your question. Yes, thank you. Sorry, I, I logged in a bit late. I was having trouble launching the meeting, but thank you so much. Um, is, yeah, most... uh, if I go to the, email, to the website, I'll be able to get an email address. Yes, you'll get an email address and also the team who's online will also be happy to share our website and our email info at kayana.org for more information. Um, Grace or Jeffrey will get back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, George, I see you've raised your hand. Maybe you can just unmute yourself and uh, ask your question. Yes, I wanted to ask uh, whether the platform also onboards uh, items which have been imported but are uh, in a used state and not so bad condition, which can be used by the base of pyramid uh, customer. Does the platform you know, accommodate that kind of wear? Thank you. Um, yes, George, uh, thanks for your question. Yes, um, so it's very important to know that uh, what we do at Transili is um, we provide you with an e-commerce uh, shop that is actually your own. How you choose to uh, use it in terms of the products is really up to you. So um, one of the things that we actually enable businesses to do is to build brand, you know, like uh, Pat is saying, there's, there's the importance of you being able to build a brand. And that's one of the ways we do it by allowing you the freedom and flexibility to use your e-commerce website uh, in any way you want. We don't limit the pro products that you upload because of course, if you don't 
uh, sell good products, then customers are not going to buy from you. You're going to be doing a disservice to your brand. So it's quite important that uh, whatever it is you want to sell, as long as it's of good quality, gives value to a customer and, I mean, solves a problem, then it's totally up to you. You're quite welcome to use it in any uh, proper way as you desire. Thanks, Davey. Do you do any due diligence on the businesses that you are hosting at all? Um, so what we do is uh, we'll give them advice you know, on the products that they are selling. If, uh, if we feel that an item might not be very well suited for the market, we'll advise you, but it's really up to you to be able because uh, we are not a marketplace. We don't control what you want to sell. It's really up to you. So I think this is where you police yourself. You know, you choose that this is the kind of product that I would want to sell. This is how I would want to sell them. However, we do have a service known as uh, uh, buyer protection. And buyer protection protects both the seller and the buyer. And the way it works is uh, in case someone places an order on your shop, uh, they have to pay for it fast. And uh, once they've made payment, uh, then during the delivery process, they have to actually verify that this is actually what they bought before you can receive your funds. And on the other hand, it also protects you from uh, fraudulent people who will say, uh, deliver this to me and I'll pay you on delivery. And then maybe you get there. And we've seen incidences of uh, guys getting mugged or you've spent the time and money to get a product to them and they decide, oh, I'm no longer interested in these items. So it protects both you as uh, the seller, um, it protects your business and also protects the buyer. So that that's, I think, how it uh, self-regulates. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments before we wind up? I... Um... I think I wanted to talk about the DST tax. I think there was somebody who had talked about it. Earlier in the year, uh, we did host DST tax in, when it was introduced in February before it was suspended. And um, we had, we've had quite numerous uh, interactions and probably if you access some of our magazines, you'll be able to, you'll be able to see, um, uh, you know, all our magazines actually carry rights articles in all of them. And they try to uh, uh, educate the community. We hope that we'll be able to host them again um, later in the year. If there's no, too, not too much Zoom fatigue, <laughs> we will try and host them again. But I, if you go to their website, you'll see lots of links on where they talk um, in great detail about the, D, the digital sales, uh, sales tax that is um, on uh, goods being sold online. So yes, I, I hopefully maybe, I, I'm not sure if it's on our channel, if the event is on our channel, but I know if you go to our partner who was hosting it, Jukua, you should be able to see the link of the entire two hours uh, conversation that was hosted there. So without much ado, I will release everybody to enjoy their uh, Saturday um, with a few words and just letting you know, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. <laughs> so it is work, building a, a business and building a brand is hard work um, and keep at it. Consistency, I think Davey has told us that we should consistently Continue posting, continue sharing um, uh, your product. Uh, you know, uh, don't go for likes. At the end of the day, what we're looking for is conversion. We're in business. We're not um, in the interest of um, egos, building egos. So you have to be consistent. Listen to your audience um, and understand the audience to see and understand the data, what is being purchased and what they want more of. And uh, the last thing I think which was just brilliant is you are building an asset. Do the work, build it invest in it and you can invest in it in forums such as these masterclasses that Kayana hosts for you. Thank you very much. Um, coming up uh, soon will be our Kenya Cottage Industry Expo. This is our third expo that we're hosting in October. Please follow our, our pages and of course we have your email addresses so you'll be receiving additional information if you'd like to participate in it. We also have a Women in Retail magazine coming out which which offers in-depth interviews from leading um, entrepreneurs in the retail space. And also we'll talk a little bit about some of the bilateral agreements that Kenya is getting into with governments like the US and the UK. So look out for that as well. And of course, our big posting of 700 plus businesses that are trading online, which is the um, uh, 
the Home Biz Catalog. Also, all these links are available on our website at uh, www.kayana.org. Plug into the community, any women on the call, make sure you're a part of our community. We look forward to um, vibrant engagement. Thank you very, very much, Davey, for your time, for your knowledge, and the Anzili team, which I know are on the call as well. We really, really um, value your partnership, and uh, we look forward to sharing the coupon link with our community. Asante sana. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.